All right, existence precedes essence, a, uh, uh, some philosophical terminology in, involved here. What is existence? What is essence? What does it mean to say that one precedes the other, right, or doesn't? Uh, Sartre helpfully at this point turns to an example that he talks through as a working example, something a little bit more concrete. He offers the example of a, a, a paper knife. Uh, and here, to explain what a pepper knife is, uh, think of uh, a letter opener. Uh, in the olden days of book publishing, it was not as common as it is now for uh, one to buy books already bound and with the, uh, the edges of the paper cut so you can turn all of the leaves. Instead, what printers would do is print the book on huge sheets, which would then be folded uh, into a, a book-like bundle by a complicated folding pattern. And if you had the money, you might take the book off to get it bound, and you might also uh, pay someone to, uh, to cut the edges and so forth. But a fairly common practice was for people to have something like a letter opener uh, that one could slit all of the, the pages uh, as one read them and so forth. So that's uh, the point of the, the, uh, the example here. So to pick up the quotation again, quote, if one considers an article of manufacture as, for example, a book or a paper knife, one sees that it has been made by an artisan who had a conception of it, and he has paid attention equally in the conception of a paper knife and to the pre-existent technique of production, which is part of that conception and is at bottom a formula. Thus, the paper knife is at the same time an article producible in a certain manner and one which, on the other hand, serves a definite purpose. For one cannot suppose that a man would produce a paper knife without knowing what it was for. Let us say then of the paper knife that its essence, that is to say the sum of the formulae and the qualities which made its production and its definition possible, precedes its existence. All right, now for this, I want to go to the board so we can lay out a table. All right, so to take up uh, Sartre's explanation of the es existence precedes essence formula, which is uh, definitional, here's the uh, phrase existence, from which we're going to get existentialism, that being the fundamental issue preceding essence, right, whatever we take essence to be. And we talk through the example here of the paper knife. Okay, think about a paper knife. Right? We're trying to explain the existence of the paper knife what it is to be a paper knife, why the paper knife exists, what it's for, and so forth. And Sartre then makes a point is to say, the first thing that happened is uh, presumably somebody had a book and uh, came from the printer and uh, all of the pages were not yet cut. And he said, wouldn't it be great if I had some sort of implement that uh, I could use to uh, cut the pages so I can read my, my book? Well, what would, I would need is to have something that is fairly thin, fairly sharp, fairly sturdy, and so forth. So why don't I get some metal and shape it in the, the form of a knife, maybe sharpen it and so on, and have a nice handle and so forth. The point here is that the first thing that happens is there is an idea. Uh, there is a felt need. There is a purpose. Uh, that needs to be fulfilled, the purpose here being cut, uh, cutting paper. And so then there is, as a result of that, some sort of a conception of something which, if it existed, would be able to, to do so. And all of this is in the mind of an artisan. And the artisan then takes his idea, his purpose, his conception, and then figures out how to go ahead and make some sort of method of production, an actual paper knife. And so what then happens is the paper knife right, comes into existence. Okay. So the story of the paper knife then is that an artisan right, has an idea right, based on a purpose that he wants uh, to, 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 to achieve. Uh, forms a conception, then uh, on the basis of that conception engages in an, an action of production and the paper knife then comes into existence. Now what Sartre then is going on in the passage to say is that what we mean by the essence is this stuff here. What is it to be a paper knife? What's the idea of a paper knife? What's the purpose of a paper knife? All of that, is, and how would we make paper knives if we're going to bring them into existence? That is the essence of what it is to be a paper knife. Okay. And the point is that the essence, that is to see the idea and the conception of the paper knife, uh, is there before there are any actual paper knives. The existence of the paper knife comes after the essence. So in this case, essence precedes 
existence. All right, and that makes a lot of sense in the example of, uh, of, of the paper knife or any sort of article of manufacture here. So again, if we anthropomorphized and we put ourselves in the, per per the perspective of, uh, of the paper knife and said, okay, why do I exist? What is the meaning of my existence as a, as a paper knife? What is my purpose? Why am I here? Why was I created right? And so forth. Well, the paper knife has a ready-made answer to that kind of question. It doesn't really need to anguish over the right answer to those questions because it came into existence for a purpose, and the meaning of its existence is to fulfill that purpose by the artisan who, who uh, designed and, and created it. Now, of course, we're not really interested in paper knives. We're just using this as an example. Uh, what we are interested in human beings. Why are we here? And Sartre is using the paper knife as an example to contrast human beings. If we then were to ask the questions, why do we exist here? What is our purpose? Uh, uh, what is the meaning of our lives and so forth? Well, a traditional answer uh, says, well, essentially, it's the same story that we give for paper knives uh, applied to human beings. We're not talking about an artisan uh, working in his workshop here. Instead, we're talking about the, the great artisan of all artisans. That is to say, initially, there was God, and God had an idea. Right, whatever his idea was. God had certain purposes that he wanted to fulfill, and on the basis of that, he came up with a conception, and then God became the creator, made the world, made human beings, and put us here then on the world for a particular purpose. So God then made human beings, okay, according to his idea, according to his conception, according to his mode of production, right, whatever that happens to be, and so, according to this account of our existence as human beings, our essence right, precedes our existence. And then when we wax philosophical as human beings, according to this conception, we start asking, why are we here? What is the purpose of our existence? What is the meaning of my life? The answer is, my purpose is to fulfill God's purpose. I am here, just as the paper knife is here, to do whatever uh, it was that God made me for. Okay. Now, we turn to existentialism. Existentialism is rejecting this account of human origins, this account of, uh, of, of the human being's uh, answer to the question of the meaning of life, because if it is the case that God is dead, if there is no good, or no God rather, then human beings don't come into existence with an essence already built into us because there is no God to have had a conception of us, no God to have given us right, a meaning. Instead, what we have then is the mere fact of our existence. Right? There is no God who created us. There is no God who gave us a meaning. Nonetheless, we exist, and there is no being yet that has had a conception and given us a meaning. So, we exist and our essence then is not yet made. There is no human identity, there is no human meaning, there is no human purpose initially. If we're going to get one of these essences, it's going to be something that comes along after the fact of our, of our existence. So that, uh, uh, that provocative existentialist phrase that we sometimes uh, hear, that there is no human nature. Right. What is meant by that from the existentialist perspective is not that there isn't some sort of biology right at work here, but that there is no essential purpose or meaning right, to that biology. Our existence is simply a brute biological fact. We are beings that have certain capacities among those capacities for choice and action and so forth, but we don't have anything that tells us or makes us make certain choices or tell us what capacities should be exercised in what directions and so forth. So, all of the things that fall on the side of essence. What's the idea of my life going to be? What's the purpose of my life going to be? Uh, how am I going to take my capacities and actualize them in this direction or that direction? What am I going to make of myself? Uh, all of that is initially indeterminate. We exist. We confront a world that has no ready-made answers for us. We confront a world that has no God to tell us what the answers are. We are then in the existentialist predicament.